6.1 arc length, area of a sector, and linear speed. Um, arc length is defined as the distance traveled on the circumference of a circle by rotating through an angle. Uh, if you use the definition of a radian, it should be really easy to find out what the arc length is. And this is one of the reasons why we have radians. So, if the radius is 1, and we rotate exactly one radian, then the distance on the outside should be 1, right? And if the radius is 1 and we rotate 2 radians, then we should have the radius twice on the outside of the circle. So we do 1 times 2. And if it's 2, the radius is 2, and we go 1 radians, then we should have exactly 2 on the outside of the circle. And same thing over here. If the radius is 2, and we go 2 radians, so it might be in the whole picture here. Right there, let's try that again. So if you have a circle, and start over here and you rotate, and this is 2, and you rotate 2 radian, and I should get the radius, not once, but twice, right? It should look a little like that, right? So it's not the right angle. It's not the right angle. Okay? So you should get 4 radian, because this is what it's supposed to be 4. So, in general, the rule is that the distance is the radius times the angle of rotation, if it's done in radian. Um, <clears throat> and the formula for that, there's a little formula for that, and the formula usually is written this way, S radius R times radius. Okay? So, S stands for the distance. Don't ask me why. I don't know. Um, for example, find the arc length if the angle is 0.25 radians and the radius is 30 feet. So the arc length S is 3 times 0 0.25, which will be 0 0.75. In this case, it's feet. Find the arc length if the angle is 120 degrees and the radius is 4. So we just multiply, right? So we do 4 times. Keep in mind, you can't do 120. You have to convert 120 degrees. You have to convert that into radians. Because the dimension has to be in radians for this to work. So let's see, what is that? So there are 260 in the And there are 360 in the radian. So it's 2 pi over 3. So the answer would be 8 pi over 3 feet. And you can leave it. Or you could multiply it out for that. Um, sometimes we use those in work problems, and, use this, and uh, they can be sort of complicated in terms of reading. They're not super difficult in terms of the math. But now here's an example, for example, uh, that deals with uh, arc length and, and radians. And all that. So the latitude is the angle formed by a ray drawn from the center of the Earth to the equator, and a ray drawn from the center of the Earth to wherever we are. Uh, where we are. So let's say if we were here, then this measurement from here to here, between the equator and the line coming to the center of the Earth, is where we are, um, that is the latitude. Okay? Uh, let's see what else do we have. Alaska, Montana is due north of Albuquerque, due north of the Pacific, the Brackton North. And we need to find the distance between Alaska and Albuquerque given these measurements. So, um, well, if we know that the small angle here is 35 degrees and 5, and this one is 48 and 9, then we should be able to find the angle between the two sides, right? We should be able to find the little one here. So we know that the angle of rotation we get from Albuquerque to Glasgow is going to be 48 degrees and 9 minutes minus 35 degrees. And five minutes. So that angle is 13 degrees and four minutes. Now, <clears throat> if I want to just use the formula as it equals the angle times the radius, then we do know that the radius is the So that should give me the distance traveled on, on uh, obviously on the surface of the Earth. Then we do need to convert this measurement to radians. So we're going to do 13 degrees on 4. We first have to convert to 4. So that's 4 over 60th. 
And then we need to convert that. So this is now decimal degrees. Now we convert that by multiplying by power one eight. And again, we get a calculator on this. And uh, it should give you about that many degrees. Okay, so once we have the angle of rotation that goes from here to here, then we can just plug it in here. There's no radius of the Earth. It's given to us as 3,960. So that means the distance between Alaska and Albuquerque is about 903 miles. Okay. Let's look at area of the sector and uh, look at range speed and anchor speeds. So we have a sort of tied to work problems and radians and, and things like that. Uh, the book sort of gives you a nice little proof of why this is true. So if you want to know that, look at the book. I can't remember the page. Something in the 350s. Um, but we can use this. So here's a formula. And I would, um, you would be given this. So this formula would be given usually, um, unless it's a quiz, because then you have a cheat sheet. So what do we do? So find the area of a sector for a circle with a radius of 2 feet and an angle of rotation of 30 degrees. Okay. Again, notice that the angle is given, has to be in radius. So what is 30 degrees? So we're going to convert 30 degrees, and 30 degrees is pi over 6, right? So 30 degrees is pi over 6 in radians. So using that, we can just plug this in. A half times r and r is 2, we need to square that, multiply that by power over 6. So we do that, that's 4, that's 4 divided by 2 is 2, 2 over 6 is, so that's pi over 3 feet squared. And again, you can leave that. You know, it's about 1 point something, right? One, pretty close to 1.05. What angle rotation is needed to have an area of 4 meters squared if the radius of the circle is 2? So if we know that the area is 4, and we know that the radius is 2, we should be able to solve for the angle, right? So that's 4 and a half, so that's 2. So that means that the angle has to be 2. When it's a whole number, or a, num a number without a pi, we generally do write radians behind it. It just helps people that are reading the problem. Okay, uh, let's see, linear speed. So linear speed is usually given as a capital V, and we need to make some connection between linear speed and circular motion. Um, so I think you should be able to calculate this without really um, knowing the formulas and stuff. And then we'll see if we can do that. So for example, how fast is a rock moving if it is swung at the end of a two-foot rope? So this is two feet, sorry, at a rate of 180 revolutions per minute. So it goes around 180 times in a minute. Okay. Well, I know that speed is the distance divided by the time, right? And if we're going to go 180 revolutions per minute, then let's say that the time that we're using is one minute. So I just now need to find out the distance, because for speed I know time, I'm saying it's a minute, and the only thing that's left is the distance. Well, I can find that distance, right? Um, let's see, the distance in one revolution would be exactly 2 pi times the radius, right? 2 pi radians in a revolution, or just one revolution is exactly the circumference of the circle. So that would be 2 pi times 2, which is 4 pi. And this is in feet, right? Okay, so in one minute, keep in mind again that we said we're going to do this in one minute. In one minute, we have 180 revolutions, right? So 4 pi is one revolution. So in one minute, we'll do 180 times 4 pi. So the speed, the linear speed, will be 180 times 4 pi. That's the total distance all over one minute. And this one was in feet, and you get a calculator, and you get a pretty good speed. It's 2,261.9 feet per minute. And that's quite a lot. Okay. 
Um, angular speed, which is usually shown with this little w, is the angle of rotation divided by the time. So angular speed is the angle of rotation divided by time. So what's the relationship between linear and angular speed? Well, we know that speed is the distance divided by the time, right? And the distance in a circle that some objects travels is the angle times the radius, as long as the angle's in radians. So we get theta times r over t, and then you can sort of see over here we get theta over t times r, and that is angular speed. So we get as a conclusion that linear speed is angular speed times the radius. Okay? Keep in mind that that was angular speed. That's how we defined it. All right, <clears throat> last word problem. Let's find some linear speed of an object that's moving on the surface of the Earth. So Earth rotates on an axis to the poles. The distance from the axis to location on the Earth, 40 degrees north latitude is about 3,033.5 miles. So the distance from, if you have an axis to here, the distance, so that's that's a slightly smaller radius than if you were here, right? Okay, that should make sense if you go up a little bit, so you lose a little bit over here on your, if you consider this your x-axis, you're now up a little bit. So this distance stayed the same, because that's the radius of the Earth. Then you see that you cut a little bit off the x-axis over there. Okay, um, compute the linear speed on the surface of the Earth at 40 degrees north latitude. Well, the velocity <clears throat> the linear velocity is the radius times the angular velocity. Um, well, again, we, we're not given a whole lot, so let's just make an assumption here. Okay, so let's assume that we're traveling one day. And why one day? Well, because the Earth, in one day, which is 24 hours, the Earth rotates exactly once. That would be 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. And that should be enough to fill out this thing over here because let's see what else do we have. We know that angular speed is the angle of rotation. It's right here. Right? Divided by the time. And we said that the time was one day. So now I can find out what the velocity is. So the velocity is the radius, and the radius was 3,033 and a half miles. And we're going to multiply that by this thing over here. So that would be times 2 pi, and then we're dividing that by 24. And let's see, this was in miles, and this is in hours, right? So this is in miles per hour which is a good measurement for speed. So the linear speed for an object at 40 degrees latitude is 749 miles per hour, which should make you very thankful for gravity, otherwise you would be flying. And if there was a brick wall really close to you, that would hurt. Thank you.